so many records together and uh, get excited about them and uh, they found their way into the repertoire. I especially like the blues material that he did, like, you know, the, the, the live album that came out with Crossroads on it and Spoonful. Those were songs that, you know, I had to spend a whole lot of time in my bedroom listening to it, what was going on. I thought those were great numbers. <laughs> I got fed up with Graham. Graham was going in the opposite direction to what I was going. And I'd been running the band for about three years, and I decided that I wanted to get my own band together. This is, and the first person that came to mind was Clapton. So I turned up at, in Oxford, where Eric was playing with John Mayall. And it was in a big hall. Eric saw me in the dressing room. I went, in the interval, and said, oh, man, you've got to sit in, you know. <laughs> so I said, yeah, I would love to, you know. So, you know, we just, uh, everybody stood up, and bang, it, was, it happened immediately. It was really, like, changed the whole gig. So after the gig, I said to Eric, you know, like, I'm getting a band together. Would you, would you like to join the band? And he said, yeah, straight away. <laughs> Eric said, what about a bass player? 
And I said, hmm. And he said, what about Jack? <laughs> Ginger uh, fired me from the Graham Bond bands, but I refused to be fired, you know, because he wasn't even the band leader. Jack and I had had several altercations during the Graham Bond days. I went, I really don't know, but you're right, he's a fucking good bass player. And so I said, I don't know, I'll go and see him. So I went, next day I went round to Jack's place, and I haven't seen Jack now for about six months. And I knocked on the door and there was Jack, and he was like surprised to see me as well. And we sat down and had a cup of tea, and I told him what was going on. So I'd seen Eric, and you know, this thing was happening, and did he want to come with us? And he said, yeah, and that was it. Um, it was sort of like, let bygones be bygones, sort of thing. The first time we played was in Ginger's house, a little semi-detached house in Neasden. It was like, out the back was the Welsh Harp, which is an artificial lake reservoir. And the kids all used to play over there, right? It was like fields all around it. And we're, we're playing and it's really happening. And, we're all, and we looked out the back and you could see out through the French windows and up on the hill above was just a pile of young kids, but all dancing, freaking out. They'd all come from all over the Welsh Harp. They'd heard the music and they were digging it. And that was great. You know, it happened. It was magic immediately. You're hanging out, you know, that's, you know, bands start as a result naturally when, they, when guys hang out. You get three or four musicians that like one another, what they do, then they hang out, then they become a band. It, yeah, it was pretty instantaneous. There was something there, you know, just a combination of, I mean, Ginger and myself had played a lot over the years before, you know, jazz things, Alexis and, and Graham. I mean, uh, with Graham Bond, we played 300, and 20 or 330 gigs a year, you know, that's, it's, it saves you practicing. <laughs> um, and then the combination of Eric's, uh, at the time, very pure blues uh, playing, and our kind of pushing him beyond what he thought his limits were, I think. It's very exciting, yeah. <laughs>
thing about Cream, the interesting thing was that the freedom that there was, that any of the instruments could be the lead instrument on stage or even on record, I guess.